challenge for the global practitioners, our regional and international partners, including our own governments, is to understand our cultural heritage in all its diversity and draw on its traditions, and values, and knowledge to make development more effective. Now, the creation of jobs, facilitation of social cohesion and harmonious relationships, the establishment of niche markets for local foods and cultural products, all of these are opportunities in abundance when exploring our cultural heritage in all its diversity. Yet we have often become accustomed to looking for answers outside without building on our own reservoirs of traditional knowledge and cultural essence to address some of the developmental changes we are currently facing. And as we continue our journey in the context of development with all its promises of new scientific innovation and economic benefits, we cannot afford to forget how culture and history can help shape modern development. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the knowledge that culture matters in development processes is not only one, but the central role it plays in achieving sustainable development has only recently been recognized by development panels and incorporated into development policies. Now, since the world decade of cultural development from 1988 to 1998, a series of significant international meetings have focused on creating harmony between culture and development, harnessing culture to achieve sustainable development, and promoting cultural creativity and diversity through development. As described by UNESCO in 2010, and I quote, culture in all its dimensions is a fundamental component of sustainable development and is a powerful contributor to economic development social stability and environmental protection. It is precisely the medium through which individuals express their ability to fulfill themselves and is therefore an integral part of development. At the global level, the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda acknowledges the natural and cultural diversity of the world and affirms that culture is a crucial enabler sustainable development. The outcomes document of the United Nations International Conference on Small Islands Development States or the SIGS Accelerated Modality of Action. I think start off. Pathway recognizes the wealth of cultures in small island development states. It recognizes that culture is a driver and enabler of sustainable development. In particular, indigenous and traditional knowledge and cultural expression, which underscores the deep connections among people, culture, knowledge, and the natural environment, can meaningfully advance sustainable development and social cohesion. So, global and regional policy frameworks most definitely exist, and it is up for all of you, all of us, to use these frameworks, including the regional cultural strategy to set the direction of our work. And while this need to be adapted to our national context, there is already a clear guide put before us through these global and regional policies that our own leaders have signed up to. And as Ministers for Culture, it is our responsibility or your responsibility, it's mandated responsibility to take action and to exercise leadership towards accelerating our commitments of culture for development. Our region, the importance of culture has been recognized at the highest level by our leaders. The framework of Pacific regionalism promotes the diversity and heritage of the Pacific and seeks an inclusive future in which cultures, traditions, and religious beliefs are valued, honored, and developed. Across the different spheres of development, whether it's in the social, economic or environmental spheres, there is an increasing recognition of the role of culture as an enabler for and contributor to achieving development outcomes. At the national level, within our own countries and territories, our cultures continue to be an important pillar for advancing our aspirations and development goals, and nurturing the growth of our people 
of our nations. The Pacific has been recognized for its richness in our cultural values and traditions. Apart from the sea, the sand, the sound of the Pacific Islands, our tourism industry is supported by our artists who create numerous tourism-related products for business to enjoy. Whether it be handicrafts or sophisticated traditional music, or a tour of the interior to show some of our traditional natural places. All of these reflect our richness, and we need to determine how we gain fairly from our traditional knowledge. However, ladies and gentlemen, culture must always remain a tool used to account, never as an excuse to hide behind when we do unacceptable things. It is a sad fact arrived in the Pacific, over 60% of our women have experienced some form of abuse, often from their spouses or their partners. And this cannot and must not continue. We are Islamic people, but we cannot abuse our women. Our children or other valuable groups, either physically, emotionally, or economically. This is where we need to call it out, as our Honorable Prime Minister has done, when he labeled Michael, men who beat up women are cowards. Very strong statement. We cannot allow anyone in our countries to use culture as an excuse not to respect fellow human beings and not to create an inclusive society as our constitutions and join us we need to take the best of our cultures and move to the modern times to create an evolving and inclusive culture which respects different traditions, backgrounds, beliefs, and celebrates our collective diversity. Nelson Mandela said, and I quote, For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others, unquote. Words of wisdom. As leaders in preserving and promoting culture, your role, or our role, lies in providing the strategic direction for culture in the region, taking into account the emerging development challenges that the Pacific Islands face, our capacity to respond to these challenges, and how we can position conversations on the importance of our cultural context as a key consideration in the discussions on policy and program developments for the Pacific. And furthermore, given our responsibility as the guidance of our cultures, we ought to be prudent in our engagements in development dialogue and thereby seek out opportunities that preserve and protect our cultural heritage and identity. In this shared connection, we shall remain vigilant in our efforts to address our development challenges so as not to compromise our cultural values and principles. We also need to keep a watchful eye over our affairs that in our endeavor to become sophisticated and advanced in our developments, we do not lose our cultural identity, but therefore lose who we are as a people. It's a fine balancing act that I'm sure you will address in the next two days. Closing, ladies and gentlemen, the importance of culture to develop cannot be overstated. There is a clear evidence of the role that culture plays in enabling sustainable development. And we have a duty to uphold the value of our cultural heritage <coughs> and identity as Pacific Islands. I'm confident that this platform will further enhance collaboration amongst our leaders to address cultural issues and challenges for them. Adopt the best preservation practices to safeguard our Pacific cultures for our next generations of families. I want to thank all of you for availing yourselves to attend this very important meeting. I congratulate you all for your continued leadership of the culture sector. And I trust that your hard work will enable development in the Pacific that is sustainable and conducive to preservation, protection, and promotion of our Pacific cultures. I wish you all a very successful meeting and successful deliberation for the next few days, and it's my honor and privilege to 
we declare a fourth meeting of the Saving Ministry of Culture. Your Almighty God, continue to guide and bless our nations and peoples. Now, as I will, you. Thank you. accepting the invitation to be present today and to deliver our keynotes. Keynote address is very, very important to all of us and it helps us to do our work in our countries knowing you stand behind us and we humbly present these gifts. Sorry she couldn't be here, but we do have Very kind of you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Oh, and Your Excellency, in our <laughs> tradition in Hawaii, when we give ho'okupu, we also offer um, hula and chants and messages. So the theme of our festival, our 13th festival that will be held in 2020, is a tu itahoyuli. Tu itahoyuli. Which means to hold on to your steering paddle. And it comes from a very old chant, a prophecy chant before Western contact in Hawaii. And it reminds us that foreigners will come to our land. They will come on big ships. They will have much information and new things to learn. And it is our choice whether we learn those or not. And it is also our choice in that learning. If we're going to learn from them, but retain our own identity as Hawaiians or as people of the Pacific, or if we were going to learn from them and become them. So I'd like to present this mele for you in your honor today, and hope that we will see you in Hawaii in 2020. I'd love to come, man. God willing. Hi, ule pahu itamotu. Ule pahu itamotu. Uno itele ala a e pahu ita motu. Uho hi olota ta ita nati ta mai ta ilo mana o holo ita motu. Uli li ata ole tu ita ho e uli. I to hit a paleta ye po I eat a to a I wa to I my ah he me a ah he me a oi ah he me a ah he me a oi he no no ule.
comecei ali, lá trabalhei o Malô. Thank you. 